this side of Mount Hood. And uh, so we spend a bunch of time on horses, and, and we spend a bunch of time with horse people and rodeos and bull rides and, and uh, as much of a Western lifestyle as we can pull off. And uh, I have a real appreciation. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Richard. He, he uh, heard some of my poetry and uh, invited me here tonight. And I'm thrilled to be here. Not as thrilled as you are to have paid good money to hear some of the finest singer-songwriters in Portland, and you got a cowboy poet. <laughs> well, I'll get some lottery tickets, because it's obviously your lucky day. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, like I say, we, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we have a real appreciation for Western heritage and uh, the Western folk arts, you know, Western music, not country music as much, but Western music and, and Western uh, oral tradition and cowboy poetry being one of those. I've been a fan of cowboy poetry forever, uh, or at least uh, at least when Johnny Carson started putting Baxter Black and Waddy Mitchell and those on and, and uh, whatnot. So I've uh, been writing cowboy poetry for a little while myself. Um, I hesitate to, um, I say I write cowboy poetry, I hesitate to call myself a cowboy poet because well, I don't call myself a cowboy, although I have friends that say contraire. They say, but Tom, you own a horse and you love to ride, and well, why just look at the clothes you wear? <laughs> yes, I've got Stetsons and resist dolls and boots, a dozen pair, and a closet full of snappy shirts and wranglers that I wear. Now, I know the label in these jeans says they're cowboy cut, but on me, that just means to get them on and got to suck my gut. <laughs> and I know what the cowgirls say about those wrangler butts, but it's only in my dreams that I've ever drove them nuts. <laughs> no, I say calling me a cowboy because of what I like to wear would be like calling you Lady Gaga if you put tinfoil in your hair. <laughs> well, it's a compliment I cherish, but it's going a bit too far because just knowing where they shop don't make me half the man they are. For to me, cowboy is a name that ought best be reserved for those fitting the job description, for those that are most deserved. But me? Well, I've never owned a cow or cut one from the herd, so calling me a cowboy is just a bit absurd. I've never ridden night guard. I've never helped a calf and cow. I've never doctored up a sickly calf, not sure that I know how. Well, I understand castrating, but I've never made the cut. <laughs> and if I tried... I'd probably slice that dude from belly back to butt. <laughs> I've never worked a Brandon. I've never eaten cookies, Chuck. I've never settled in that rough stock shoot, said boys, let her buck. Moses, <laughs> I've come to wrestling with a steer is flipping a big old T-bone while sipping the frosty beer. <laughs> but <laughs> I've learned some from Vaqueros, and I've rode with buckaroos. Well, I've ridden with a wagon train for four weeks up in the blues. I'm at home up in my saddle, and I know my horse is mine. I can guide her with the gentlest touch, or just the shift of my behind. <laughs> and I've got to admit that the loop I throw, oh, it's better than just fair. Well, I am dang near deadly accurate when roping a patio chair. <laughs> <laughs> and I write some cowboy poetry, and I like reciting my written verse. Those who hear it don't seem to mind, though it could be much worse. <laughs> Mostly folks are just thankful I'm not writing uh, Western songs, because if you've heard me try to sing, well, you know that that's just wrong. <laughs> so while I don't give myself the moniker, I understand why some folks do, so you want to call me cowboy, I'll leave that up to you. And if you do, I'll consider it an honor to be counted in that crew, I'll just smile and Tip my hat and imagine I'm Chris Ledoux. <laughs>